Welcome Simmers, this is your captain speaking. And we are about to embark on the third leg of the Alaska bush trip. We have covered the first two uh, legs earlier uh, in this series. This trip is going to take about 30 minutes, 30, a little over 30 minutes to complete. It's not a very long flight, but uh, uh, we will want to, to get up in the air pretty soon. Uh, I have had a lot of difficulty with this particular uh, uh, segment because uh, my computer, uh, my the, the, comp the, the program has crashed to the desktop about five or six, seven times on me now, and uh, I lost count some time ago, uh, but I think I've got things working uh, together now that we can go ahead and complete this flight, so let's, let's go ahead and get started. All right, we are at the south end of uh, this nearby runway, and we'll be taking off toward the north, and then uh, we'll be following the track toward the northeast as we uh, embark on this uh, leg of the trip. So let's go ahead and get on the runway. Release the brakes, give it a little bit of power, and line up. And uh, the first thing we want to do is get our heading set to the runway heading. We will use that at the beginning of our takeoff. Then set our altitude. We'll start off at uh, 2,500 feet and uh, with a vertical speed of 500 feet per minute. And uh, let's go ahead now and get this baby in the air. Always like to see the runway come into view. It doesn't take very much to get this cub up into the air. Once the tail starts to fly, you can fly, you can just about fly the entire aircraft off the runway. Turning on the autopilot now should give us a climb of about 500 feet per minute on our direct heading away from the runway. Now that we have a safe speed, we'll go ahead and turn our navigation mode to GPS, and that will put us on course. I flew this trip once already, so um, it is a little bit familiar to me. The last time I flew, flew it, I had to fly without the autopilot. It wasn't working correctly. But now the autopilot is working, so that will uh, make it a little bit easier to stay on course. You notice over here on the right this valley as we come up to it and the colors.
Hard to believe anything natural looks quite like that. I think instead of reading the nav log as we've done in previous segments of the butch trap, we will simply watch the scenery for interesting uh, sights and see everything we can see. Bring back just a bit on the throttle. About 22 inches of manifold pressure and just cut back a little bit on the RPM to keep it from going into the red. see some of the red uh, soil up the peak up on that peak on the right it really contrasts with the white snow and just wonder what the red is That is the Pogrom, Pogromny Volcano. The Aleutian Islands are part of the so-called Circle of Fire that circles a large portion of the Pacific Ocean along which uh, are many volcanoes that have cropped up because of the tectonic activity beneath the sea.
several beautiful lakes. This is called the West Caldera Lake, Caldera Lake. And uh, beyond that bridge of land is the East Caldera Lake. I believe this is the Fisher Caldera, according to the Navlog. Looks like you could probably find fish in any either of the any of these lakes. My guess are those are trees and not people standing out in the ice.
colors on this island are really amazing. All of these islands were built up by volcanic activity. You can see the black, which makes sense, coming from a volcano. But where did the other colors come from? The answer to that, I believe, is the fact that volcanoes bring up elements from deep in the surface of the Earth. And those elements are just different colors. Almost purple there on the side of that mountain. Could be lichen. And I think I'm going to have to change our course here. Because our turn is not going to be soon enough to clear that ridge. or that slope from this side of the volcano. black lava. This is like lava I have seen in other places. Lava is very light. It's lighter than water and floats.
should be taking a pretty sharp right turn here in just a moment so let it continue to travel and there is our turn we need to connect to the nav to the GPS to get it to turn A little turns right here in a row back and forth. I'm not sure exactly why that happened. Not what I expected. interesting uh, airplane obviously uh, very simple compared to most modern airplanes except for the uh, glass cockpit uh, many of the components are like airplanes have been for many many years for example here is the throttle lever over here on the left hand side just a physical connection to uh, the uh, well I don't know if this is a has a carburetor on it or fuel injection probably a carburetor on this model the uh, propeller uh, control it is a, a, ver a variable speed propeller up here on the left uh, the handle controls the uh, the flaps 
or what they call oh, they have a term for it I've seen, I have saw somewhere I don't remember what it is now but we call them the flaps each of the wings contain uh, fuel this is kind of a modern uh, setup I believe in that well, I take that back. Um, I was going to say that the the fuel was automatically adjusted, but it's not, and we need to start using the other fuel. So let's go down and find the uh, fuel switch and switch over to the right-hand side. And start using the fuel on the other side. And so th this is the fuel gauge, which is just a uh, tube connected to the tank so you can see the level of fuel in the tank the blue indicates this is aviation fuel green I believe green is the color of uh, jet fuel the uh, the uh, Magneto switches are these two switches here. Ignition left hand, ignition right hand, those are the two magneto switches, which on the Cessna would be on the starter switch. The starter switch over here has only the start uh, indication and, and nothing else. Of course, it's a tail dragger, which adds its own interesting components to takeoff and landing. You have to land it a little bit differently than you do uh, playing with tricycle gear. If you come down too fast, for example, and land on the front gear, the momentum of the airplane will cause the tail to go down. And if you have any speed at all, you know what happens when your tail goes down. That increases your pitch. And you lift up off the airplane. So you get a great big bounce out of it. And so the trick for these uh, tail draggers is to come in uh, slowly right above stall speed and either land well you really want to land as gently as you possibly can on the front two wheels a two-point landing or land uh, in a stalled condition or almost stalled condition on all three wheels if not the back wheel and allow the front wheels to come down that way your tail doesn't go down and, and your pitch does not increase any from that point forward and there's no uh, there's no tendency then to bounce getting pretty close to our destination for this trip. We'll be flying right across to that land bridge that you see in front of us. Then take a left and then the uh, airport that we are flying toward will be right in front of us but it's hidden by these short hills or mountains uh, that are between it and uh, the airplane as we come in so we'll want to come in right above uh, the, the hillside and so that we're ready and able to to uh, bring it down at a safe uh, angle to land the airplane Or at least that's the plan.
somehow think that the Pacific Ocean would not be quite as calm or quite as still as it is in flight simulators so that uh, the reflections would be a little more a little less pronounced put it that way and some of these reflections are what you would expect off a, a small pond though I've never been in Alaska so could very well be that sometimes it looks this way. So the airport is right over those two little short hills, right beyond those two little short hills on our left. And let's go ahead and drop down to 1,500 feet, and we'll descend at about 800 feet per minute. We've got some uh, altitude to bleed off here, and we want to slow down and get down to landing speed. So we'll just cut our power back all the way. Cut back a little bit too much. Need to get speed back up to bring our nose down. And go ahead and give it uh, one notch of flaps. Now's a good time as any to take control. There is our runway right over those hills.
two notches of flaps. Give it three notches of flaps, four flaps. All right, not bad. Take our flaps off as soon as we can. That make sure the gust of wind does not lift us up. like we have some company. And there we go. Trip completed. Well, thanks again for watching this video. We will pick up with the fourth uh, leg shortly. So come back soon to uh, see it.